Creativity is an addiction in the way that we are always, always trying to get to it. You may not say, well, I'm going to be creative today, but it's working already. Before you even wake up, your creative spirit is already placing dreams inside your skull. Creativity is going to keep you awake at night, and there's not enough melatonin in the world that can silence your creativity. All it's going to do is upset you. But if you learn to listen to your creative energy and build with it and, and play with it, it's a child, your creativity. Play with it things will begin to spin around. Unplug because we will always say yes to creativity, totally uncut, because we all make mistakes. So turn it into a tool. This is Arrow Unplugged. I wish you could be inside this forest today. I'm overlooking this forest in South Charlotte, North Carolina. The sun is just starting to rise. The ray of light after two days of gloomy gray. It was supposed to rain, but it never did. Isn't that interesting about life? How the weather forecasters will sit there and tell you, this is what's going to happen. This is how you should prepare. This is, and then it doesn't happen. You wake up to a day like today, and here is this incredible ray of light that is just, I mean, just the forest is lit up like it's Christmas. All the different colors. There's there's leaves still from the past fall, which was what, maybe six six months ago? And, and, and the brand new leaves have this lime color to it. It just pops. And see, it's the very, very little things like that where you find the strings of peace, the strings that you can tie together to help create something that you put over your heart. And you can say, you know, it's not going to be such a bad day after all, because look at what's right here in front of me. In fact, I I have to tell you what what happened with Jazzy and I this morning. The The very, very second we entered the forest this morning, there was a rabbit, a rabbit. You don't see rabbits in the daytime. I always hear the rabbits scurrying around when we're in the forest at night. But this morning, before the sun even chose to rise, I mean, we still had light out there, but there was the rabbit, maybe three feet from us. And we just stood there having a conversation. I go, are you the Easter bunny? Because it's Easter weekend. Hello, Mr. Easter bunny. Hey, it's Arrow. This is the choice. This is what I was writing while the sun was waking up on a brilliant new day. And today we are reading from April 15th, 2022. Today is Good Friday. A celebrated 24-hour period in the world of religion. It also bears the name Holy Friday, Great Friday, Black Friday. It's a celebration of the passion of Christ. He sacrificed his life for the people. The word sacrifice. You know I had to go to dictionary.com to look up that word. It says sacrifice is surrendering a possession. If sacrifice is surrendering a possession, in digging deeper, we have to figure out what that possession is. Is it of materialistic value? During these modern times, we hear other people speaking of sacrificing their time. I sacrifice my time to be here. I sacrifice this in order for this to happen. I have to ask, is time a possession? Time may have value, but do any of us own time? If so, those many of us do nothing to protect their time. To find a presence in this place of now, and even here, as grateful as I am to be available, does it become selfish when we say, I give my heart to you? That in itself sounds like a sacrifice. A word so overly used, which takes on the image of strength, yet it cheapens its purpose. Grateful for Christ and his sacrifice. The sun rays this morning, the beauty, two days of gloom before this, and the weathermen got it wrong. It's the little things, the little things that get into our mind, body, and soul. And we don't have to use words like sacrifice in order to make a difference in other people's lives. I realize that we've come from a pandemic where our minds have been sacrificed by the news world and by the worry and the wonder and the uncertainty of what's going on. But when you look up the definition of sacrifice, it is the letting go, the surrendering of a possession. And that word possession is not a happy place in my heart because possession means materialistic. We all have possessions. I I have Native American spirituality tools inside this studio. They are possessions in my life. Will I sacrifice them? Well, if the right medicine man or woman were here, yes, I would allow them to take them. 
It's a possession that doesn't belong to any of us. It's like time. It doesn't belong to us. But through us, other people can grow forward. Breathe in. Breathe out. Yes, it's tough right now for a lot of people. Switching jobs left and right is not the answer. You're not going to find what you're looking for. I used to run home when I was a child, and I quickly jumped into bed after school, and I dreamed of being in a different family. I did it all the time. Today, as I inch closer and closer to 60, all that's left is my brother and my sister and I. I'm not dreaming like that anymore. Sometimes we have to be present in our place of now to understand what our personal sacrifices really mean. My sister was the caretaker not only for my father, but my brother and my mother. Her sacrifices versus mine, she wins. But it's not a contest. We all have personal sacrifices, but we don't have to hang up billboards and make movies out of the sacrifices that we have made. But on this Good Friday, this Great Friday, this Holy Friday, I just want to say... There was one that made a personal sacrifice, and it changed the world. I'm Errol, and that's what I was writing while the sun was waking up on a brilliant new day.